Hello and welcome to another episode of Alpha Audio Alpha Labs. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we measure uh, a product like the Blue Sound Note, but in this case the uh, power supply modification. And what I'm trying to uh, show you, yeah, there we go. Um, is how we can compare these measurements uh, with the normal uh, power supply. We bought a new scope, the PicoScope. It's a 5000 series, two channel, 200 megahertz. And we use it now for our listen setup. And before all sorts of people say, yeah, that setup is not correct. I know it's not completely correct. Uh, we tweaked a lot, but we don't have the space to create a fully compliant EMC uh, setup. We do have a decent ground plane. This is grounded to the listen to the network uh, RF measurement system. Well, it's, it's a CDN, so a coupling decoupling network. And we use the uh, tech box uh, splitter for common mode and differential mode. And we do lift the power supply in this case, because we're actually measuring the power supply and not the node. Yeah, I know it should be bigger and it should be separated with ground, but we don't have all that in our uh, lab. So we do it like this. It's the best way we can do this. Um, this one is grounded to the ground plane as well. So all should be sort of correct. And we tried a... Um, measurement without anything connected and it's pretty much silent except for some high frequency spikes but you'll see for yourself that this is quite capable of uh, showing you the interference um, we already modified it so you're looking at the spectrum now with the s booster plugged in as you can see the s booster is now connected to the blue sound node, the N130. The network is connected. This is not grounded, by the way. Uh, that's uh, on purpose, uh, because you get more issues when you're measuring uh, with ground than without ground. I have set up the PicoSoft software uh, to a two megahertz spectrum. I'm starting at one kilohertz because uh, the listen works between 9 kilohertz and around I think uh, 110 megahertz I think yeah something like that but we don't need that kind of bandwidth uh, so we only measure between uh, 10 kilohertz and 2 megahertz in this case and that's more than enough cool now this is showing what I expect um, I measured this before, of course, when we were tweaking and I was wondering how it uh, measured. This is what I expected. This is uh, between two kilohertz, uh, sorry, 10 kilohertz and 2 megahertz. And we can scale something like this to see what the spectrum is, where this bump is uh, coming. I think this is the CPU that we're seeing. This should be 10 kilohertz. Okay, yeah. This is the bump, and you can see it as well in differential mode as in common mode, and the same here. But we missed some spikes, and there should be a difference. But all in all, this is pretty darn good. The, the peak is at minus 120, and the noise floor itself is around 128. Yeah, that's about right. And common mode is a little bit higher, which makes sense because it's harder to block. Now we are looking at the network output, and as you can see, it's higher actually. But I need to mention that I uh, attenuated the listen because it also filters then in the lower spectrum and if you don't filter it you get a lot of high frequency noise in your spectrum and uh, yeah it actually messes up the measurement a little bit but now you can see the network output and yeah you see some of the same uh, uh, bumps right here and 
I'm not sure whether this is network related or power supply related. I think it's actually in the node, uh, some sort of chipset. And uh, you see some bumps right here. So in that sense, uh, the common mode noise from the network is pretty high still. But we'll see what happens when we swap out the power supply for the normal one and um, see if it's better or worse. Yeah, this, this is not data, it's, it's very low frequency differential mode noise. You can see uh, th this is on the network alone. So you can see even on the network, it's it's definitely higher. Uh, common mode is a lot higher, and that makes sense because it's a switch mode power supply. Uh, right here, differential mode, it has a bump as well. I don't know if you can see it that well. Um, it has a bump here. Uh, it has some spikes here, that's definitely from the power supply, so it's power supply noise leaking through the ethernet. Um, well, that, that makes perfect sense. I expected it to be higher. Let's see, this is 110 and 126. Differential mode is pretty darn good regulated in this power supply. Common mode is not that great, it's, it's definitely uh, more noisy in the lower spectrum, but let's see how the um, S-Booster did. Uh, PSU 111 and 124. 10, 120. Yeah, it's about the same, but um, yeah, it's more calm. It's definitely more calm with the S-Booster. It's one bump and this is more ripple right here. The lower spectrum is worse with the uh, switch mode power supply in it, but the differential mode is actually not that bad. <laughs> yeah, 119, 128 and yeah, yeah. It's even better with the switch mode, as, except for some spikes, but common mode is definitely better with the S-Booster and I'm not sure which is worse. But all in all, the S-Booster is definitely more calm, especially with common mode noise right here in this uh, low frequency spectrum. Let's see what happens. And then we'll swap it back uh, and see what happens with the S-Booster. Wow, that's a lot of noise right here. It's not the cleanest streamer of all. I mean, this is this is noise. There is no input in the node right now. It's actually pretty comparable to the noise floor of the uh, uh, power supply, as you can see. Well, noise on the channels is equal as it should be. Now let's swap back the power supply and see what happens. Okay, now needs to boot up and see what happens on the analog output with the S-Booster device. Let's see a screenshot of the modded one and the non-modded one. Well, it's a little bit lower. It's a little bit lower. Not, not that much, but a tiny bit. S-Booster, yeah, okay. As you can see, this is the stock output. And this is the S-Booster output. Oh yeah, there is definitely a difference. It's definitely cleaner. Uh, and that's where the PicoScope is so great, because it's 16 bits, uh, very, very high resolution. We have less uh, grass here. And th this is just more noisy uh, in the lower speak spectrum. I mean, we measure from 10 kilohertz to uh, 2 megahertz. But as you can see, the, the biggest difference is between uh, 10 kilohertz and uh, 115 kilohertz, something like that. Well, maybe two, 200 kilohertz. Now you can say we only hear to 20 kilohertz, but these harmonics will be audible. Uh, definitely, we do feel them. 
Well, this is how we measure devices like this and modifications like this. So I'm really, really happy with the PicoScope because it's such a high resolution scope and you can easily compare stuff like this. Hope you like it. Um, I hope we could show you that a good power supply does indeed uh, work and it is measurable and definitely audible. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.